Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Rory Reed from RoryReedArt.com and today we have a very special video. This video will be the first part in a series that I'm doing on dark skin tone portraits. So I'm gonna take you through how I paint my dark skin tones currently and I'm gonna chop it up into different parts. So I'm gonna paint it how a beginner would paint and leave it off um, you know at a beginning stage and then I'm gonna show you how to bump it up from a beginning stage to a more intermediate level and then we're gonna finish off the portrait in an advanced uh, level um, you know basically how I currently do it. Keep in mind I am a self-taught artist. There are different ways to do this. This is just how I currently do it. So if you observe my work and you like my style, I'm gonna show you what I do now and explain it all the way through uh, so you can know. As you can see, I did start off with some burnt umber and I put that on my palette to the left there. I'm doing a touch of black now and some titanium white. And the first thing I always do when I start off a painting is I'm gonna mix a gradient or a spectrum um, that I can use to work with. So right now you see I had some turquoise blue left over from a previous painting on the palette. So I dropped a little bit of that in, small touch of black in with the burnt umber. And the reason I do that is the turquoise blue color is gonna uh, take the grayness off of the black. And it is gonna allow me to drop the burnt umber a couple shades down or a couple values down. Um, so that will be my darkest uh, dark for the actual skin tone itself. And from there, we're going to, you know, mix different levels or uh, stops. If you're familiar with the photography lingo, which is just means, you know, um, sort of like a, a stop of light, meaning a little bit different value which is how light or dark uh, the paint is. So mixing the darkest dark now, I'm gonna bump it up a little lighter, then a little lighter from that, and so on and so forth. I'm gonna make about five stops or five um, value differences from the darkest that I'm mixing now to the lightest. And the reason for that is with acrylic paint, you know it sort of uh, dries fast. So I've found over the years that if I mix my little intermediate values as I'm painting, a lot of times it'll dry out, um, you know, cause it's basically just a thin layer of paint and I'm putting on the uh, glass palette. So after about 10, 15 minutes, it's, it's gonna dry out or start to solidify on the palette and so that's not good so i found out to just or i've came up with a solution to just mix out the gradients and then i can mix the intermediate values um much faster and you know it, i won't have to mix them from scratch if they dry out and so it's just a quicker way to um operate whilst i'm painting so instead of taking time to mix everything as I'm going, I have everything ready made and I can make little tweaks. I can go a little bit darker, a little bit lighter as I go along. So those are the current colors you're seeing on the, the canvas here. These tutorials are gonna be relatively long. Like I said, this is gonna be very in depth. And so you're gonna see almost every single brush stroke you know, I'm gonna cut off the fat because uploading large videos to YouTube takes time. So I want to. I'm gonna cut off anything I don't need. But you're gonna see, you know, the majority, 90, 95 percent of the breaststrokes. So that'll be good for those of you who want to learn. So, like I said, this is gonna be part one. I'm gonna stop this particular video after I finish my outline. This video is solely is going to focus solely on 
the palette and how I use it. So we're just going over colors for this one. Burnt Umber is what I have. Mixed a little bit of that turquoise blue on the palette you see there. Or it looks like turquoise green, either one, doesn't matter. The whole point of it is to take off the grayness of the black that I touched as well to drop down the natural burnt umber to get it a little bit darker. If you don't have this turquoise blue color, it doesn't matter, just use any other um, cool color. Like you can use ultramarine blue if you have a dark purple, like dioxazine um, purple, any dark color. You could even use a dark green. What it'll do is also give your shadows a a tone instead of just pure black so when I put the the shadows on here as you'll see in the future videos part two and so on uh, you'll see they won't be like grayed out in the shadow area with just the pure, pure black it'll have a nice um, blue cool uh, deep black uh, hue to it so that's the purpose for that so I got the darkest dark where I need it and this is all uh, prep work you know um, I'm gonna pop up the reference photo that I found here I found it on onsplash.com which is a website that uh, gives you like copyright free images that you can use so for the purposes of this tutorial, I just got this photo from here of this young lady. Not sure who she is. If you know her, shout her out. Told her I'm doing a painting of her. But also it's important for you to realize that I'm not really doing this painting for uh, as a portrait in terms of getting the exact likeness. This is strictly a tutorial on skin tones and how to paint um, dark skin tones. So that will be the main focus. So if I, uh, the, the likeness is a little bit off, not worried about that. Uh, for those of you who do portraits, you know, grabbing the likeness is a whole other uh, task to bear. So right now we're just focusing on getting the skin tones to look great. Of course, I'm gonna flesh out the portrait a little bit so we'll have a good painting in the end. But that's what we're focusing in here, strictly the palette and the uh, skin tones will go into a bit of color harmony towards the end parts as well all right and as you can see I added some cad yellow deep hue and some cad orange light hue I took a little bit of those and mixed it into the previous mixture as well and the reason I'm doing that is I want to warm up these middle tones just a notch to the untrained eye they're not even gonna really recognize it but uh, for the seasoned eye they'll be able to pick it up the reason for that is when you're doing flesh tones there are certain areas of the face that uh, have a little bit more blood showing through so they appear a little bit warmer Usually in the mid-tone areas, you know, around like the cheek, the nose, um, the lips, those kind of things. So what I do is I warm up my base color, which is the raw umber mixture with the, the blue and the black. I warm that up just a notch so that I have a more natural looking brown, even though it's not anywhere near where we're going to end up but I do that just as an early step to get me on the right path. And once I have that mixed, I use my palette knife, split it in half, and then I take the next half that I just cut off, add a little bit more of the cat orange and the cat yellow, and a little bit more white to lighten that mixture up and warm the mixture up even a little bit more. And we're gonna do that for two more um, value changes uh, going lighter than where we are now. So as you can see, I have three mixtures already or three stops. 
the darkest is farthest to the left we got a little bit lighter mixture in the middle and then a little bit like the mixture we're doing right now which you can call our mid-tone the one in the middle I usually do about five and the five is just a starting point or a baseline because depending on how the portrait looks I may go darker than the darkest dark and that's not gonna take a lot for me to mix you know I'll just take the darkest dark that I have mixed now add a little bit of uh, black a little bit of that turquoise or ultramarine blue any other color and just drop it down a little bit more that's the whole point of the palette is a working system that you use to execute uh, the different values and the different hues um, and different saturations as well as you paint so this is our third mixture we chop a little piece off get some cat orange get some cat yellow get some white to lighten it up and then we mix that in to get our next lighter value and these stops that you see are just um, guesstimates that I'm using from the reference photo I'm not gonna have the reference reference photo up too long in this video uh, I'll bring it up when we do when we start painting because as I said I wanted you to get the idea of what I'm doing prep wise when we start painting I'll have the reference photo up uh, on the left side here for the entire video so you guys can check that out all right so we got that mix chop a little piece off and white and yeah I don't think I added any more of the cad orange or cad yellow because it was already warm enough this color so now I just needed a lighter value so didn't want to make it too orangey or anything like that And once again, these are just starting values, starting colors. We are going to tweak and adjust as we go along, but I am strictly going to use these colors that I mixed um, for this, um, for the first stage of, of painting. So I think that will be in part two. Yeah, I'll release that in part two and I'm going to paint the face all the way through filling in everything the background and um, the f portrait as well and I'm gonna stop part two at like a beginning stage where the average you know beginning artists would usually stop and it's just gonna be using these colors that we just mixed so as you can see, just to review again, this is the palette that I'm using and this is the system. I got my darkest dark, I got my current lightest light. When we get to the end of the painting, I'm even going to go lighter than the lightest light I have now on that spectrum mix. going to do so by adding a little bit of white and um, whatever color I choose for the background I'll probably drop a little touch of that in there just to give some slight color harmony uh, going here you can see I'm even going a little bit lighter again see I mixed six stops or six values for this uh, this piece But again, yeah, very important to understand that this is just big, a beginning toolkit that we're going to tweak and adjust as we move forward. We are painters, so we're going to use our eyes to see what happens when we start painting. If you're painting and it doesn't look good or a particular cousin color doesn't look uh, right, you got to make adjustments and we're going to use the palette to do so. We got our white and our yellow to lighten things up. We got our black and our 
turquoise blue. I think I added a bit of ultramarine blue later on as well. We're going to use those to darken things down as we go. Alright, so just going to speed things up, clean the palette off here so we have some space. Get that uh, extra CAD yellow off there and um, get a nice clean surface to mix up our color that we're going to use to outline the portrait. And yes, let me uh, just mention as well how I got to the sketch. I think I forgot that part. What I did is took the reference photo, uh, printed it out, and then just used transfer paper to uh, transfer it on the 8x10 canvas panel I'm using. As you saw there, I added some ultramarine blue as well to the palette, and now I'm mixing the ultramarine blue with the black, and just a drop of water to uh, get it more fluid. And I'm gonna use that to outline the portrait so that I have paint set in the canvas so that when we start painting you know I can still see the lines and we can keep true to the uh, proportions of the face and such if your main focus is painting and you're not really a fan of drawing I find this method way more easy and beneficial than trying to sit there for three hours drawing out a perfect uh, reference sketch with the grid method or, or anything of that nature you know any transfer uh, um, manual transfer method using a projector or using um, transfer paper and a printout is a million times better as I, I, I bought a projector like a few months ago and man it saves me so much time so much time I can just mock up my concepts in Photoshop and then just project it onto any large-scale canvas I'm using and within 10 minutes you know it's traced over and I'm ready to start painting as opposed to previously I'm gridding things out or free handing in it and it's taken one two three hours to just do a sketch basically an entire painting session just on a sketch alone so this way is way more efficient and I highly recommend it but I would but I will say if you're focused mainly on drawing then yeah you you don't want to use the projector me I don't not too concerned about drawing at all I'm a painting kind of guy, so that's my main focus. All right, so continuing on, we're just still using our ultramarine blue and black mix, making sure to add drops of water. I'm just dipping the liner brush into the my paint bucket that I use to wash my brushes in I just dip it in there get a couple drops drop it in the mixture and then uh, that keeps it nice and fluid so that the paint will flow pretty smoothly And so yeah, this stage is relatively easy. Uh, just, you know, trace over your lines. I will say when you get to the eyes, the nose and the lips, very important to get those lines exact. Anything else you can just do loosely as it doesn't really matter that much. Because you can make any corrections to like the shape of the head or the hair or the neck um, you know as you go along but if you want to keep the likeness set be very careful around the eyebrows the eyes the position of the nose and the position of the lips so when I get to that point you'll see I'm taking a bit of extra care more than normal 
whereas the other portions I mentioned like the hair and the neck doesn't really matter I'm just putting putting the line down if I miss it it's okay we'll just fix it when we start painting because all of this is getting covered up as we add the layers anyway so this is just a guide to keep the uh, proportions and the likeness somewhat like I said I'm gonna have the likeness loosely I'm not focused on it if I was doing like a commission or something I would spend you know a chunk of time grabbing the likeness and so on and so forth but for this if it looks like the reference at the end good if it doesn't doesn't matter we're just focusing on like I said these skin tones we're gonna show you how to get your dark skin tone portraits looking nice and vibrant with a nice professional look just a couple of my personal tricks that I use so you can see I've already um, put in one eye going around the nostrils now making sure to cover the lines exactly just to keep the uh, like I said the likeness as decently as possible we're not gonna throw out the likeness as a whole but as I said we're not gonna take the extra hour or two to capture it exactly So as our brush runs out of paint, we reload on the palette. Same sort of Payne's Gray mixture, ultramarine blue and black. Payne's Gray-like mixture. And some of these lines you see me putting on the forehead here are just um, tonal changes or value changed areas some in uh, slight shadow and so on and so forth I am looking I got those when I was doing it or transferring it from the reference so that's what you see there I just put a slight indication in just to remind me when I start painting hey this area is a little bit lighter hey this area is a little bit darker that's pretty much what those are for but again we're gonna use in the reference photo as our roadmaps in part two when we start painting I'll have it up on the left hand side here the whole time so you can uh, basically see what's going on and so yeah once we get done with this outline this will be the end of part one so it you're to take from this is going over your prep work grabbing a reference with good shadows or maybe I could have even done a part on that as well but the reference photo I used as I showed earlier it has a great shadow contrast in the background as well as in the on the figure itself or in the portrait itself so the portraits left side is in shadow right side is not and in the background the left side is uh, highlighted or lighter than the right side so you have sort of like a checkerboard effect left side of the background contrasts with the dark side of the face and then the light side of the face contrasts with a darker shade in the background on the far right so that's something to keep in mind as well as we start painting in part two I'm gonna aim to have part two probably out next friday already have it recorded as I said just need to do the voiceover and add in our edits and so on and so forth 
and I got some other work to do so we'll get that done so yeah that's that's the basic system of the palette you got everything pre-mixed this is acrylic paint again so um, it will speed up your painting process doing it this way this is the fastest way I figured it out I've never used any sort of um, stretching mediums to extend the drying time I always just use paint right out of the tube and and water to keep it going that's the reason for the glass palette um, so I just have a spray bottle as well that I spray the palette with occasionally when it starts to dry out and that keeps me going so it's a bit more tedious but you know I've grown to love it over the years and it saves on materials cost right I don't have to buy any extra mediums I'm just buying paint just buying a canvas get water from the tap we're good to go that's all I need And I will mention as well, um, I painted the majority of the first initial steps with a uh, flat brush, varying sizes. So I'm just going to be using a flat brush to block in everything once we start on part two. And you'll see, I'll explain that as we go as well. So you're going to need some flat brushes one liner brush if you don't have a liner brush you can still just use the flat brush you're probably gonna have a little trouble around the eyes um, lining that up but if you use the corner of the flat brush correctly uh, I should be able to make it work so yeah I'm using liner brush the flat brushes and I do have a filbert brush that I use to um, smooth out some hard edges towards the end of part two that you'll see so those are what you need palette knife to mix and just the uh, spray bottle as well so yep coming towards the end here now we got our sketch lined up we're gonna let this dry in and set into the canvas so then we when we start painting over we can have our solid lines to um, reference and keep our likeness and composition as much as possible as we move forward so yeah guys um, if you haven't already like and subscribe to the channel stay tuned for part two uh, follow me on all social media all my links are down below I'm on Facebook TikTok, Twitter Instagram and the like also check out my teespring store teespring.com slash store slash rory reed art got a couple of logo tees i just uploaded there i think you guys will like them check them out if you are so inclined and if you are interested in any prints or original paintings check out my store link down below as well you can get those there other than that hope you guys have a great day and i'll see you next time it's your boy rory peace